In the middle of rising inflation, soaring living expenses, and the idea that the end of the world has already begun, the Flutter team has managed to create another release. So let's ignore our ongoing concerns and take a look at what 3.24 has to offer. Flutter 3.24 introduces two new Sliver headers called Pinned Header Sliver and Sliver Resizing Header. Pinned Header Sliver will keep your widget child pinned to the top of the custom scroll view. Sliver Resizing Header automatically automatically resizes the header based on minimum and maximum extent prototypes, which are basically just widgets. Both of these target a special use case and are good alternatives to the OG Sliver Persistent header. In addition to this, the Cupertino library has also been updated. The Cupertino action sheet will give you a more native feel, whereas the Cupertino button has been given new focus properties. The Cupertino library is being revamped and more updates are expected in the coming releases. The two-dimensional scrollables package example app has also been updated to include new ways of using the tree and the table view. And a new widget called Tree Sliver has also been added in the package to make it possible to build trees in one-dimensional scrolling. A new widget based on material design called Carousel View has also been added to add to the beauty of your existing apps. And it also seems like more work is being done to migrate widgets that are not part of the material design system out of the material library and into the widgets library such as the feedback widget toggle state mixin and the toggle painter classes the animation status enum received an upgrade as the is dismissed is completed is animating and is forward or completed getters were added to it these getters are also available in all of the animation subclasses the animation controller now has a toggle method to switch the direction of the animation the selection area widget has been updated to add more native gestures to it this update improves the performance and fidelity of impeller for example eliminating jank when scrolling a large collection of emojis and improved fidelity of text rendering. Impeller still remains as preview for Android and future stable releases might see a full migration from the default renderer to Impeller. The default filter quality is now filter quality.medium which has some implicit improvements while rendering images. Flutter GPU preview is now available by switching to the main channel and importing the Flutter underscore GPU package. Embedded mode or multi-view is now available for web, which gives devs the capability to add Flutter views to existing web applications. To enable this feature, you need to set the multi-view enabled parameter of the initialize engine method to true inside the Flutter underscore bootstrap.js file. An interactive media ads plugin has been launched launched for Android and iOS, which gives developers the ability to monetize video streams. The plugin currently supports pre-roll video ads with support for mid-roll ads to be added in the near future. If you're tired of writing print statements to check widget rebuilds, then you're in luck because a new feature called Rebuild Stats has been added to the performance tab of DevTools. Furthermore, you can also use or build your own DevTool extension. That sums up this release and you can click the link in the description to learn more about it. You're watching the Flutter upgrade series and I'll see you in the next release.